getting ready to weld and I uh, just want to go over how I do this real quick so you can kind of see that before we go you know uh, under the hood so to say where you're, you can only see the arc and the other stuff going on but uh, just kind of see, see the process behind it one, one thing's important again is that fit up it, it needs to be perfect so you're not you, you can fill a gap on aluminum however the when you see the welds on aluminum that's like the stack of dimes you know the perfect perfect width perfectly spaced um, that, that people do uh, that's all about repeating the exact same dab over and over and over again so what happens is if you get to a place with a gap you're going to need to figure that out like maybe it takes more filler rod in that one place maybe you had to hang out longer or whatever so um, I'm not saying you can't you know make a nice looking stack of dime kind of thing with gap here or there or whatever uh, it's just going to be a little more difficult for you and the, the, the thing you can do if you're trying to make uh, good looking consistent welds is just have that zero gap from the get go if you can tack it together where it's just butted up nice and neat that's great like this side got battered I don't know if you guys can see that or not but it's just like mangled I don't know what happened <laughs> Tried to straighten it out. Uh, Jaden, my, my employee, tried to straighten it out and it just didn't. So um, as you roll it around, it's it's not bad. I mean, I'd, I'd weld that, but there's a little bit of deviation in the circle and it's gonna show at the final weld. So um, just something to keep that in mind. Also, when they bend these guys, they usually put like a grease film and whatnot on the inside. Uh, if you're welding like bends and that kind of thing, be sure to clean that out. Everything that's on this aluminum is going to boil to the surface of the bead. So if there's crap on the inside, that's just going to melt in and it's going to pull right up and you're going to have black spots. It's an unattractive looking weld uh, if you don't get that cleaned up in the first place. So it's going to be a number five collet. Uh, people ask about this. If you can kind of catch and look at this. People ask me about my, how do I do my tungstens for aluminum? And I'll show you exactly how I do it if I get this guy to let go. So generally when I, when I screw them up, I'll uh, take them to the belt sander or my tungsten grinder and I'll grind them down to a 45. And then I'll, it's probably a little better here, then I'll knock the tip off. So the very little pointy tips, I knock that off. I think it's called a truncated cone, I believe. Uh, that's how I do it if I dip it in the tungsten and I need to start from zero. If I got one that's working and I haven't dipped in the tungsten, you usually get that nice shiny like silver kind of almost looking like a ball on the end of it. The arc seems to come off that really nice, so I'll try to keep it like that. And if even if I do like sharpen this, I'll leave that silver uh, kind of ball on the tip of it. And one thing you'll notice with aluminum is that when you weld it, it has this... It, it oxides and it almost protects it. So on the top of it, it almost makes like a protective film, I wanna say. I, I really don't know what's going on, like the science behind it. I just know that if I'm gonna restart, like let's say I wanna continue this bead here, uh, going this way, what I do is I just scratch the surface and that little scratch that I did will help me get a nice crisp start as I, as I start off. Um, sometimes you'll get into a point where you'll hear it just like, the high frequencies buzzing and humming, but you're not having an arc jump off there. It that's what's going on. So if you just get a little habit, I, I don't know. You know, this only applies to automotive like welding. So uh, you know, do whatever you do in your industry, but just give it a little scratch, and that'll usually get you a pretty crisp light up, and then you can go ahead and move on. So what we'll do is we'll tack these guys just like I showed in the tacking video. I'll drop that link below too if you guys need it. Um, I'll just give it a little scratch and I'll kind of just gray for a second. Let the little uh, cleaning action kind of work on it. Get some heat into it and then I'll start walking my pedal down to uh, get those to kind of like, like sweat beads on either side kind of form and I'll just dab it and we'll, we'll tack it four different places and then we'll just weld it. So when I go to weld, it's going to be just like I showed you in the tube welding video. We're going to get ourselves nice and comfortable. And we're going to get going 
Uh, same thing as I did for the tack. Usually, once you got a few tacks on it, you got heat in the middle. This will happen a lot faster. But I'll just kind of gray it up for a second, and then start walking the pedal down until I see it get kind of shiny on either side. The puddle starting to form, and then I'll dip it, and I'll kind of hang out there for a second, and I'll wait for that puddle to kind of sink down. How? hard I push my pedal kind of determines how wide and how much heat this kind of guy gets into it uh, how how much is affected I guess is the best way to say it but yeah uh, as soon as I see that kind of dip down I'll move forward and I'll dip it again and do the same thing dip it again dip it again dip it again dip it again and I'll stop because I'm starting to get at a crazy torch angle and I'll just reset everything ABC always be comfortable and we'll just kind of get going again. We'll start in front of where I left off at, back up, remelt that puddle, and dab it, and do the same thing. Just dab, go, dab, go, dab, go. Um, I'll try to keep my torch a little higher than what I would for doing stainless steel. Not necessarily because uh, it needs to be higher or anything. It's just because we all know what aluminum looks like when you actually smack that tungsten into it, and it's kind of a mess. So. Um, I just try to, in my, I'm all, like I said in my last video, uh, there's two people, people are always too far, people are always too close. I'm always too close and I'm always trying to make myself aware that Mike, you're trying to get too close, you're trying to get too close as I will. If you're too far, then maybe you, just, you got something you gotta say, like you need to get your ass closer, you need to get your ass closer, uh, whatever it might be. Just some things to keep in mind and we'll get this thing tacked up and run a weld on it and we'll record the settings on the machine and my foot and we'll do it all at the same time and put it all in one badass little video that's gonna be for you guys to watch and see exactly how it's done. So I hope you dig it. Here are the settings that I'm using for this particular job. Uh, you'll see the pitcher and pitcher come up next, so you'll be able to watch uh, my foot pedal and see exactly how many amps I'm using. But this is how I set the machine up. Uh, I did want to say that, that probably the best video that I've ever seen on aluminum pipe welding uh, is done by uh, my buddy Max over at Fifth Street Fab. I'll put a link in the description box and you guys can go click on that and go watch that video. He does an amazing job of uh, uh, welding that tube out and uh, records the inside. You get to see the penetration as he's welding and uh, it's well worth the watch. So uh, be sure when you get through watching this video to open that up and jump over to Max's site and check it out. Good? Yep. Good? Yep. Good. You see that thing suck that thing back? Yeah. You're good. angle is something I probably should have pointed out uh, just it's really important when welding aluminum uh, you know like I said I keep a certain height and if you watch I try to keep that uh, arc pointed uh, directly kind of at the at the material that I'm welding uh, I, I tend to find that the consistency the appearance and the consistency uh really suffers if you don't if you start getting like an extreme angle then uh it, your your ripple isn't or the ripple pattern will be kind of kind of different so just something to keep in mind
I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, just applied those techniques that we talked about. I think that the weld, uh, it, it's, you know, it's not going on my Instagram page, but it's not the worst thing I've ever done. The penetration is really good. You guys can see that like penetration there is almost like a little, looks like a seam in the middle kind of going on. And that's uh, that's normal. So. so hopefully you guys will be able to kind of see what's going on with the amps in my foot and uh, what, what I'm actually doing uh, to, to make the weld. And if you apply those, then I think you'll be happy. Be sure to, you know, uh, again, I'm, I'm using my TIG finger. Over, I got this from the Weldmonger store. Let's say I'm about due to probably go over there and get a new one. Uh, but you can't do, I mean, it's just almost impossible to do aluminum without that. You know, I can just stick that right on there and I just do my deal. And uh, this stuff gets, it transmits heat like, like it gets hot and then boom, the whole thing's hot and uh, unbearably so. So, um, something to keep in mind. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you take away something from it. Uh, if you do and you want to help me out, go to monkeyfabgarage.com. Uh, we got welding supplies there. I got filler rods. I got kits for like starter kits. Uh, I got these cool GLS Fab Teflon welding cups that don't break when you drop them. And uh, turbo fabrication stuff, all kinds of aluminum bungs and fittings and AN fittings and hoses. So go over to Monkey Fab Garage, check it out. Uh, so I guess that wraps it up. So until next time, this is Mike Monkey Fab signing out.